Thank you for double clicking your mouse tonight. You're listening to the Midnight Frightcast in five, four, three, two, one. everybody welcome to the midnight fright cast episode number 35 we are 35 episodes in and you are loving every minute of it i am your host the doctor of filmonomics i would like the the, the (laughs) fabulous (laughs) doctor fabulous fabulous doctor of (laughs) episode number 35 (laughs) i thought that went very well thank you oh my god (laughs) i'm not gonna talk for the rest of the cast you both can all right it's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great cast now no way we're gonna let that go yeah (laughs) so i'm the doctor of filmonomics my name's greg the movie guy and i'm sitting here with josh who's a dick (laughs) and patrick who's also a dick it's gonna be a good one yeah all right yeah you threw me off my game i was so ready to like, no, I will say it was light a, fire on I this. I will say and go. It was, I will say it was a very colorful intro. It was very colorful. <laughs> Welcome, friends and guests, and whoever's listening to the Midnight Fright Cast. Again, I am your host for the evening, Greg, the movie guy, and we've got some awesome stuff to talk about with you this evening. For starters, we watched a trailer for what appears to be a sequel for uh, the movie of M. Night Shyamalan's Unbreakable. But it may be a sequel for another movie, too. It may be a sequel for another movie. And that's part of why I have questions and maybe why I shouldn't have brought this in, because I haven't seen either of them. Wow. Jesus criminy. Are you living in a cave? Kind of, yeah. <sighs> wow. <laughs> We're going to no, pause. I, I have, watch no, no, no. Them we are not, no, we are not going to pause. We are not going to pause because I have no shame in not having seen those movies. And I will tell you why once we give our spew yeah. about the trailer that we watched. Spew. Our spew. spew. S-C-H-P-E-W-W-W. Spew. Cool. Wow. Josh, what do you think? Um, well, first of all, let's answer your question. This is a universe that M. Night has <clears> created. <throat> so we started with Unbreakable mm-hmm. and then he did Split. Well, fuck! Now I didn't realize he hadn't seen it, so now I'm giving a spoiler. No, go ahead. But the Greg. movie's but the movie's been out for over a year, so that is true. Totally give a so Bruce Willis's character from Unbreakable shows up at the end of Split. Split. Okay. Um, as a quick little cameo, it's like after the credits, wasn't it? Or it was yeah, it was like a little, little tag at, at, at the, the very end, of, yeah. end or right at the yeah. So this is building so, on top of the question that I have to ask or that yeah. I'm gonna ask. So yeah. Continue. So. He connected those, which is fantastic. It was like that I did not see coming when I went and saw Split. Mm -hmm. Um, So this uh, movie Glass has brought those two universes together. together. Mm -hmm. So ask your question. Let me back up and I'll I'll explain why I haven't seen these movies. (laughs) Uh, When Unbreakable came out, I think that was about the point that I had been burned by M. Night Shyamalan. He had just done Sixth Sense. That was it. Unbreakable was the second film he did. Really? So you didn't no. Get, you, yes, it was. You did not get yeah. burned second, by the Sixth Sense. He yeah. had done something else. No, before. he didn't. No. Are Unbreakable you sure? was the second film he did. Oh. That was it. That's what IMDb's for. Well, what's you guys IMDb talk about? that? Okay, so they may not be a valid argument on that, <laughs> and I'm still whatever it is. I I'm burned by M Night Shyamalan. Yeah, I, well, I do he not, had like four or five movies in between Unbreakable and Split, which is my maybe why you didn't see Split. That's probably more likely why I didn't see Split, but I. I had a a rough time after whenever the village came out. Okay. I think that was the first movie that really kind of kicked me in the balls from him. You got it. He had two movies prior to the sixth sense, wide awake and praying with anger, but then unbreakable was the one immediately following the sixth sense. Sense. Really? I didn't know that. Okay. My bad. What was right after that? Right after Unbreakable. Lady in the Water? Signs. Signs. The Village, Lady in the Water. Okay, so it wasn't too much further after that. So I think maybe what had happened, and whatever the case is, I didn't catch Unbreakable, but I went and saw The Village. So I didn't see Signs until that came out, which Signs was decent, but you know, once you saw The Alien, it was just mm. like, mm, gigantic. <laughs> yeah. I went and saw The Village, and at that point, I was done with Shyamalan. Well, real quick, we're not, now we're not reviewing Glass. Now we're reviewing M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> Shyamalan. So, this, will be our, this will be our topic. I'll <laughs> dig into that, though, really quick. So I followed The Village for a really long time. I was super excited for that movie, mm-hmm. even though I hated signs. And when they did the reveal in that movie, I was so pissed off that, I mean, I followed that movie for almost a year. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, when they did the review on that movie, I was ready to give up. Were you pissed because you thought it was going to be something different? It was or? such a fucking cop out. Oh, so it was a gigantic letdown. Such a cop out. <clears throat> I was like, had those like creatures been legit? I would have been yeah. all my poker chips in that no. movie. But when they, you, you wouldn't have liked that. I liked it because just seeing that they've been fucking with these kids for so long. And everything else that just mm-hmm. pissed me off, and that's what made me angry with the ending. Not, I didn't feel it was a cop out. Okay, so before we get to that, you didn't like it because the monster was a gigantic, yeah, letdown. Yeah, yeah. You didn't like it because they were actually in the middle of a gigantic park. Actually, I really enjoyed the movie. I hated the ending because it made me yeah. angry. I enjoyed it to the reveal. Yeah, because I think uh, both of those parts made me upset was that the fact that they were enclosed in this giant park and the monsters weren't actually real. And I thought that was a gigantic letdown for me. And that's why I was done with Shyamalan from that point on until I went and saw The Happening. And then I really hated him. Oof, yeah. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I enjoyed Lady in the Water Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And see, I haven't seen Um, that one either. So, but yeah, then The Happening happened. And (laughs) I think um, you will really enjoy Split. And I've I've heard you guys say that and it's it's on my, uh, I think I have it on HBO Go. And I want to watch it. I'm willing to give him a shot because you both have it's recommended a huge return. For okay, him. and that's fair. And I, I'm I'm glad to hear that because Shyamalan is a talented director. He's got a lot of good things going for him, and I, I would love to see him come back and redeem himself from those things that were just awful. No, I think the <clears> difference, <throat> though, and don't I could be wrong on this, so I may be just talking out my ass here, but I'm going to say it anyway. Cause I don't give a shit. I think the difference, though, between The Sixth Sense and Split was after he did The Sixth Sense and Hollywood came a call in and started going, here is some money. Have fun and write whatever you want. It's uh, it's going back to that saying, like, the less money you have, the more creative you're required to be. Sure. I think Split was self-funded. Oh, really? I, I don't think that was studio-backed. Okay. I could be wrong. And if I'm wrong, somebody hop on here and tell me. Yeah. I think it was the return of going back to just being on his own and not having any backers. And that forced him to tell a story that was more broken down. Sure. Because this wasn't a big story. It was, right. again, it was basically, I don't say it was one location because it was a, f- a couple of different locations, but mm-hmm. it wasn't a huge. It was, it was a simple story. Yeah. Minimal locations. And I'm sorry, James McAvoy was snubbed at the Oscars. Yeah, James McAvoy he was. He should have been nominated yeah. for, sure. the, for this performance. Yeah. So anyway, back to Glass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let's, let's return back to that. So what this looks like is Shyamalan's attempt at a superhero film. He's trying to capitalize on the, the word that I can't think of right now. Uh, he's jumping on the bandwagon. We'll go with that. That's kind of that's kind of how I'm feeling about it. Yeah. it for me, it, it looks intriguing, but I, I still take Shyamalan with a grain of salt mm-hmm. to where I probably will not go and see it in theaters just for the sake mm-hmm. of if he twists something and I get burned. I'm going to drive out to Hollywood and we're going to have a come to Jesus meeting. Yeah. He did not well, twist anything in Split. No, there was At there all. was no twist. There I was no there was no, twist. no big reveal, I don't think. No, it was all pretty right there laid out for you. I, I think people okay. were expecting one and there just wasn't and I yeah. think it was I think he did a really good job of just telling a story mm-hmm. without well, obviously he created it knowing that he was going to go further with it. Yeah. Especially with that ending. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So you're saying the twist is coming. I don't know if there's going to be a twist. <clears throat> It'd be great if there wasn't. It would be okay if there was no twist yeah. in that universe at I, all. I think he painted himself into a corner by doing these twists. Because right, then exactly. everybody was expecting it and then mm-hmm. they were getting let down by it. And I think maybe he stood back and said, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to I'm just going to tell a story. I'm going to be a storyteller here. Mm-hmm. Now, I think you might be and I don't know if this happened to you, Patrick, or not. But like when I saw the return of Bruce Willis's character and Samuel Jackson's character for the first time, those guys playing those characters in like 20 years. Mm-hmm. Ish, sure. That's what got me excited. I was like, those characters are like, there, there, there they are. They're back. Twenty years later, and which is kind of a weird thing right now, is because that seems to be happening a lot lately. Like characters that you saw twenty long, years long ago, ago or whatever. Back. Now you're seeing them again, and that's just like it's like a nostalgia it's because feel. nobody what wants is. to come out with any original ideas. They're trying to capitalize on old IP, and it's yeah. But seeing those characters for the first time again after 20 years right. is what got me excited because, like, this is where they are 20 mm-hmm. years later. They're still right here. And the combination of Glass and James McAvoy's character, I think, is going to I think he's going to do some cool things. OK. Putting those two in there together. Yeah. 
I'm excited for Glass. I and I, I will ride on both your recommendations because you haven't burned me to this point so oh, far. Oh, I think we have. You didn't watch Poughkeepsie tapes. You haven't watched Poughkeepsie tapes <laughs> so, yet, or the, what was the other one? Exactly. Was this? Aftershock. Aftershock. That's right. <laughs> okay, so you you haven't burned me as much as Shyamalan has burned me. So I will I will watch the film. Okay, but I mean it it looks intriguing. I just I still take Shyamalan with a grain of salt. The other thing yeah. I will tell you really quick was Split. I saw Split in the theaters three times, and I okay. never see multiple movie times sure. more than once. That's how good it was. And that it's it's on my list to see again. It's on my HBO Go, and I'm looking for a time when I can just sit down and just uh, just get lost in the story. Right. Going back to the glass trailer now. I don't really. <laughs> now I'm about to contradict myself. I can't wait. Here we go. <laughs> it doesn't really give you a lot, right? It it's does, Sarah it doesn't, Paulson, which is fantastic because mm-hmm. we all enjoy her in American, American Horror, Horror Story. Story. It's Sarah Paulson as a psychiatrist, basically just telling the three of them in this room what she's a doctor of, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Filmics. And, and, di- and what her initial <laughs> diagnosis of each one of them is. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's, but that's basically, I mean, there's some clips in there of some action and stuff. Right. But it but doesn't, it doesn't you, drive it, anything. It's hard to tell what the story might even be just yeah. from these clips. I don't think he's going to give you from that trailer more of the same shit. He's not going to regurgitate old stuff. Mm-hmm. He just doesn't really tell you what right. he's going to do. Right. But I'm okay with that. I'm okay with a little bit of, of mystery. I don't need to be spoon fed, spoon fed <laughs> you know, all the good scenes or whatever. Right. It's nice to have that little voiceover and that one character saying, this is a little bit I'm going to give you. So, yeah, I am intrigued by the trailer. And it looks like uh, McAvoy's not the only one coming back from Split. Uh, uh, that we've no. got Anya Taylor-Joy coming yep. back. Yep. I'd be curious to see if Betty Buckley comes back. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. And, you, and now I can't even say why. Thanks a lot, Greg. Yeah, Greg. Whatever. Are you, what are you, what are you? Uh, I, I had the same initial thoughts on it, that it showed a lot of clips of things that looked, one, humorous, two, interesting, three, intriguing. Mm-hmm. But I didn't gather anything from it that says, hmm, I'm going to guess what the story's about because yeah, yeah. I have no idea what the story's going to be about or where it goes. Because when you start off with the three of them in a psychiatrist office, I'm just thinking, oh, is this just going to be them talking for yeah. 45 minutes with 30 minutes of action? Right. Type yeah. Thing. It's got to start. I, I, it's going to start out of the gate with something going down because yeah. they didn't catch James McAvoy's character at the end of split right so i'm wondering if they're going to take off from that now we had we had discussed prior to casting whether or not to do this trailer because is it horror is it not because then that jumps back to what split is Mm -hmm. which is i think a psychological thriller Mm -hmm. with elements of horror in it so it'll be interesting to see where but unbreakable did not so to see where this combination of the two goes will be interesting. Is psychological thriller a subgenre of horror? It, I don't think so. I think no? it's it's one of those genres, and actually I'm going to bring this up when we talk about our film tonight. I think it, it's one of those that can live in both camps. Yeah. Because you could really go either way with it. It's just a matter of, A, is there like a gratuitous amount of blood or anything like that? Yeah. So it, it could go either way, I think. But it did end up on a lot of people's top horror lists. Horror, horror lists. Yeah. Okay. So yep. that's fair. So Greg's not going to see it in the theaters unless he's really, really impressed with Split. January 19. I'll be there. I think that's what it said. It said January. I didn't see an exact date. So it's, it's yeah. James oh, Mag- Jan- 2019. I see what yeah, you're saying. Yeah, January yeah. 2019. I thought he meant January 19. That's what right. I thought. It's January, January 2019. January Why are you getting so specific? That's Sorry. weird, man. James McAvoy is going to have a huge year next year. I think I will probably go see it in the theater just because I enjoyed Split so much. So, yeah, look for that. January. 2019. 2019. 2019. All right. So, from there, we're going to jump over into our What Have We Been Watching segment. I know I've got a few movies on the docket that I would like to mention. I, mine are going to go quick because I didn't really watch anything new. Because I've been doing that whole thing uh writing. And when I try to write, I, try not, I have background movies that I just kind of, like, throw mm-hmm. on in the background. So... I double featured, uh, and I'm bringing this up because I wanted to go back and listen to the episode. We've already covered these on. I double featured The Babysitter and Better Watch Out, oh, nice. uh, which is a fun little double feature. Both the movies are a lot of fun. I can't remember when we did that discussion who lived where as far as which movie you liked better. 
Do you guys remember where you sat? Oh, babysitter, definitely. I love babysitter. babysitter. Yeah. Okay. I think. Oh, I said, Christmas, and I yes, feel like I, I said, "Better that. watch out." And if I did, I'm about. I'm gonna switch because the babysitter. I think you. I remember you saying the babysitter just didn't have any redeeming. Like none of, none of the characters in there you liked in the babysitter. Yeah. No. No. I, okay. No. I I love the babysitter. I okay. thought it was a great oh, cool. film. I think he meant that all the like teenage <clears throat> characters. There were no redeemable qualities about any of them. Like when they got knocked off and killed by the kid, they like, I mean, didn't give a shit. Really. There was a couple of them I really didn't care about. Like I think the Asian chick I wasn't mm-hmm. really concerned about. I thought the cheerleader was hysterical. Yeah. Oh, you um, shot my boob. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I really especially like the guy as a as a protagonist. Yeah, the, jock. the shirtless jock yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I really liked him as a protagonist yeah. because he was almost like as he was trying to kill the kid, he was kind of testing him and building him up, would you say? Or yeah, trying of, to better yeah, him a little yeah, bit, yeah. which is – weird but kind of redeeming in a way and then the connection and the relationship that the main character and the babysitter yeah, yeah. actually had was just I, they did it really well I yeah, thought yeah solid so anyway I, I'm not going to go down a huge long road with it I double featured that Patrick do you want to go next oh, I definitely can go next okay. um, I've been listening to a new podcast lately it's fairly new I think they only have six or seven episodes out Josh recommended it one time it's called The Horror Virgin oh yeah that's yeah uh, it's a really good podcast if you haven't heard that one I'm not yeah, saying it's a lot of fun. I'm not saying dump us and go listen to them don't please no. please don't do that <laughs> but it's interesting because they're the point of view that they're taking is it's two people who love horror films and then one person who absolutely does not love horror films and has hardly seen any of them mm. and they're taking them through movies one at a time and getting his initial response from someone who has never seen those movies before so it's really interesting podcast so that's not necessarily something i've been watching yeah something i've been listening to and it will lead into something that i've been watching for my next one i I need to check that one out because it sounds like a phenomenal uh podcast to listen to it's called the horror virgins the horror virgin horror virgins i actually i turned my wife on to the fear of god which is weird because she hates horror movies but she loves listening to these guys. Mm-hmm. She listened to the Predator episode twice. Oh, really? Have you listened to the Predator episode? I have episode? not listened to that Oh, my one, God. Yeah. Go and listen to it. They okay. do an Arnold Schwarzenegger impression. You'll be on the floor crying. You're laughing so hard. All right. It's awesome. Highly recommend. So I took a recommendation from you guys and from, I think it was our last podcast trailer. Okay. Yeah. Yes. We watched 14 cameras, correct? Yes. We watched 13 cameras. No, no, no. No, oh, the trailer, trailer for 14 cameras. Yes. cameras. Yep. You went yeah, and watched 13 cameras. I went back cameras? and watched 13 cameras. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Holy right. wow. Yeah. Well, it's weird to say I loved it because it's a twistly fucked up movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I tell you, that guy scares me more than any creature or monster I've ever seen in a movie. Yeah. He's a creepy dude. He yeah, is. He's freaking good. Freaking creepy. Yeah. Freaking creepy. So, uh, yeah, I went and watched 13 cameras. Really enjoyed it. And I'm excited to see 14 cameras now. So your review is coming soon? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> I've, I actually have a bunch of reviews to to pump out, so. Gotcha. So, yeah, 13 cameras. Oh, am I up? You're Sorry. up. Uh, uh, yeah. So, again, I just, I did rewatches. So, I was uh, going to put something on the other day that I had seen a million times. Again, it's a movie that I can hear, so I just know the visuals. I popped in Freddy vs. Jason. I uh, love that movie. What a dog shit movie. But it's just a lot. Of, it's a lot of fun. It's, I mean, it makes no sense. And it's not, like, great. But if you're just wanting to put something on mm-hmm. and just sit back and not have to really, like, worry about it, Freddy vs. Jason's a good pick. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I popped it in. It was uh, stupidly entertaining. It was entertaining. That's so, why I liked it. Yeah, I had fun. That's it. All the, right. uh, the, the credit song at the end of that is a great song. I'm trying to remember who it's by now, but whatever that song is, it's really good. Okay. Okay. So look up that uh, that trailer or the, the, the end the, credit the, the song from Freddy vs. Jason. Freddy vs. Jason. Very similar to what you had just said. <clears throat> that it, I, listening to that cast, it made me think of other movies, and I actually popped in Urban Legend. Ooh, Ooh that's I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, and I didn't realize how. One, how young Jared Leto was in that movie. Oh, oh was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Two, how bad Tara Reid was in it. And three, I enjoyed it just because I knew what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. that's You know, it's yeah. just campy slasher. Yeah. If you watch that kind of movie any other way, you're just going to be pissed <laughs> right. when you're done. <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Yeah, it's full of plot holes all yeah. over the place, but is an interesting watch, an entertaining watch. Love it. That song was How Can I Live by Il Nino. Cool. Look it up. It's really good. Wow. I enjoyed it. Uh, so in the last couple of weeks, I'm trying to get myself caught up on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Last Saturday, I rented Ant-Man. 
And this Saturday, I went and saw Ant-Man and the Wasp. And I was pleasantly surprised by both. Uh, I thought Ant-Man was better than the second one. I, I liked that the movie knew what it was. I liked that it didn't take itself too seriously. And Paul Rudd is just, I love Paul Rudd. He's oh, yeah. a fantastic talent. And anything that he does is, I don't know why you wouldn't watch it. Yeah. So loved them both. First one was better, but uh, I've got one more movie to get myself caught up on the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I own it. Wow. Yes. The and it's whole- Thor Ragnarok. All right, uh, because there's been so much talk in the news lately about the casting for uh, Andy Machete's It 2, mm-hmm. um, I went back the other night and rewatched it, it Part 1. I'm really excited about the uh, Part 2 coming out. The casting, he just released the whole adult cast for it. Which um, is awesome. <laughs> I only know three of them in it. I have never heard of the other three. I'm mm-hmm. not saying they've never done anything. I'm just saying I don't know who they are. Right. But James McAvoy is going to have a, a big year next year with now Glass. And then it comes out September 4th next so year. So it'll be basically two years. Yeah. Right. After two years. the first one came yeah. out. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, James, James McAvoy is uh, is going to be in it. And Jessica Chastain mm-hmm. is in it. And then uh, Bill Hader. Bill Hader. Yeah. Is the other one that I knew. And. Uh, they did show some clips at Comic Con this weekend too, supposedly. And uh, word back from that is it's dark as shit. Like, well, good, way darker it should than be. Part one. So it should be. They, uh, I mean, including, they have to, including footage they cut out of Part one that it's they are this. possibly going to toss into this. Okay. Um, Intriguing. September next year. Now, uh, who is James McAvoy? Playing. He's playing Bill. He's playing, he's Bill. playing Bill. So then, because uh, I know Bill Hader's in it, yeah, he, which I'm excited. So to see. Bill Hader's he's playing Richie. Richie, and then uh, I think Jessica Chastain was the, is playing uh, the fat kid. Was Finn Wolf? Uh, good call. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, who? Bill Hader is uh, playing uh, Finn. What's his name? Wolford. Wolford. Wolford? Yeah. Uh, the one that was cracking jokes all the time. Yeah, yeah, the skinny yeah. kid with the glasses. Got it. Cracking jokes yeah, all the time. That, yeah. There's a cool picture of uh, the two Beverlys the other day. It was. Young Beverly passing off the red balloon to Jessica Chastain. Oh, um, oh. it was kind of cool. Huh. So um, it, it's interesting because there was interviews with the kids on who they wanted to play them, mm-hmm. and they had a dream cast. They had a dream cast. Yeah. The kids said, "This is who I want," and she had picked Jessica Chastain, yep. and Finn Wolford had picked Bill Hader. Nice. Oh, did he? Okay. Well. Yeah. yeah. So I know those two got their dream actors yeah. for them. I know the 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 bigger kid. Uh, wanted it was it Chris Pratt, wasn't it? Chris Pratt, Chris yeah. Pratt. play him. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's no fucking way that was going to happen. No, but no, that's you know. that's a money thing right there. Um, but yeah, I think it's going to be. Yeah, I don't know this guy who's playing him, Jay yeah, Ryan. Yeah, I don't know any of them outside of those three. Okay, so. so that that brings up an interesting point because I know how you like to watch horror movies. There Do are I? three. Yes, there are three A list actors mm-hmm. in this movie, mm-hmm. and you hate it when there's people in there that you know. Yes, but I safety do factor know. Thoughts. I do know the um, fate of those three. Right, because you already know the story. Because you know the story, so that I'm okay with. Okay, it's that. Uh, yeah. It's when you I, go and see something that's completely fresh. Yeah. And you see like Tom Cruise plays the lead. Yeah. I wouldn't go to a Tom Cruise movie if you paid me. I but, wouldn't either. For some reason, the first actor that I could think I of you. out of the thousands well, yeah. of better actors than yes. Tom fucking Cruise. Um, if Ethan Hawke shows up in a horror film again. Fair. So, but those three I am. You're on board with? I'm good with you. Yeah. Fair enough. And speaking of Stephen King. Leads me into <clears throat> my, actually, I haven't been watching because I've been reading It's strange. When I go to the gym, uh, I just have my iPad with me. And when I'm on the treadmill or the bike, I just have it sitting in front of me and I read while I'm doing that. How do you do that without vomiting? Um, Oh, I don't have that issue. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, I don't don't have that issue. So I just finished Stephen King's latest book, The Outsider. Okay. Typical Stephen King. Not bad, not great. Just kind of middle of the road Stephen King. I don't think they'll make this one into a movie. Mm Mm-hmm. But enjoyed it. Uh, Basically, the premise of the book is a – I'm not giving anything away because this is what's on the jacket cover Hmm. – is they arrest this guy for murdering a young man. They've got eyewitnesses seeing him there. They've got DNA, all sorts of stuff putting him at the thing. The only problem is 
he wasn't there. He was in another city altogether with other people, so he's got a solid alibi. Hmm. So it kind of goes trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. How can this guy be in two places at one time? So nice. it's a very interesting premise for it. Very nice. Yeah. Did, did you read Dr. Sleep? I did read Dr. Sleep. They're making a movie of Are it. you excited about the movie? No. Okay, cool. Good talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Thoughts. <laughs> the, only, the, the only reason being is because I wasn't all that impressed with the book, so we'll see what they do. And also the fact that there's not been a really good version of The Shining. Okay. That how can you follow that up with a with the sequel to The Shining when there hasn't been a good Shining? I'm going to take that back. Kubrick's movie was good, but it was not the book. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Okay. <laughs> the Shining by Kubrick was his interpretation of The Shining. It was a, the TV miniseries was much much closer to the book, but it and was, it a was TV, awful. But it was a TV. Oh, it was awful. It was a TV miniseries, so they couldn't really do what they needed to do. Because you can't do horror on TV. It's hard to do horror on TV. Especially because when when did that come out? Because I remember watching that when I was younger. Oh, it was in the it was mid thousands. No, it was mid to late nineties. Really? Mid to late nineties. Yeah. I'm going to put it on that because I, and it it was the guy from wings Wings was in it. So 1980 was when Kubrick's came out, right? Sounds right. Um, 97. 97. Okay. I, I only remember that because uh, one of my neighbors was watching it and I was watching it at my house. And every time something scary would happen, I'd turn off the TV and call him and find out what happened. Yeah. So and now what do you think about the master of Stephen King, Mike Flanagan directing <sighs> it? He did Gerald's game. Yep. Mm. And uh, well, it's saying it would be a different thing if they had what's his name? Darren Bont, Darren Bont. Frank Darabont. Frank, Frank yeah, Darabont. if he was doing it, I would think differently about it as well. Because to me, he's like one of the main successful people for doing for and adapting Stephen King stuff. So. And then you and McGregor playing Danny. Yeah. No. No. I just, Nothing. Okay. I, just, I can't get this guy excited about Doctor Sleep at all. I'm going to quit. Yeah. <laughs> I quit. I just, like I said, it's it's one of those things where the book itself was interesting. I just don't think it was as powerful as The Shining. Sure. So. Cool. All right, uh, we're going to have to wrap up what what we've been watching, but you guys still have one each. Yeah, I'll do mine really quick. Go, Greg. I've got, okay, so I've got two of them. Um, one I'll just touch on really quick because I actually have a podcast. Excuse me, I'm on a podcast. I have a blog post coming out on it. It uh, was a movie that was dropped as a Netflix exclusive called Legacy of a White-Tailed Deer Hunter. I came across this, and it didn't intrigue me at first until I watched the trailer, and I saw that Josh Brolin and Danny McBride starred in it. And so I checked it out and I was actually pleasantly surprised. I won't go too much more into it. Check out Greg, the movie guy.com for the blog post, probably coming out tomorrow. <laughs> so that was that one. Okay. And then uh, there's another movie that I've been watching. I've been kind of following. They've been posting on it. Another Netflix exclusive called how it ends. Yeah. 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 I, I did get a chance to check it out and it's, it's decent. It wasn't as impressive as I was hoping it would be. Uh, Forrest Whitaker is not the greatest actor. He's a great actor. It all depends on what he's in. Yeah, this was not one of those. So I had a little, t- I had a tough time with him. Otherwise, I'd give it a three star. Three, three, three out of five. All right, three out of five. All, all right, right. <clears throat> that's above half. So that was that's it. Yeah, that's cool. what I've been watching. Um, I would not normally do this, uh, but I saw this uh movie a uh, week or two ago. And it's non-horror related, so there you go. What? Uh, my wife wanted to go see the documentary, Won't You Be My Neighbor? Oh, yes. Ooh. And all I said when I left that movie was, or that doc was, if you grew up watching Mr. Rogers, you have to go see all right. that movie. Yeah. It just dives into his life growing up, and then his early days of doing public, it was public access, mm-hmm. access TV mm-hmm. before he did. He had a show on before Mr. Rogers Neighborhood and just the stuff he had to do to improvise through that show going into his life doing Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. And I don't I said I'm not going to see it a ton beyond. You got to go see that movie. If you grew up with that guy, there was people bowling wow. <laughs> at the end of that movie. Yeah. So um, I was not one of them because I do not cry. But um, there were tears um, all over the place in that film. So you should go check out that. Doc. Excellent. So let's, let's Greg way segue. 
Sure thing. And jump into our final segment for the evening, since we do not have a topic, unless you want to count the Shyamalan little yeah, thing little, that, yeah, that, could, our topic. that could be. <laughs> we all oh, watched good. a movie this oh. evening or this last week or last two weeks. We all watched a movie that we have been talking praises about for a long time, but never really talked about on the podcast. And it felt time to do that mostly because we couldn't come up with a better movie, <laughs> but well, we, we could have, but. we could have, but this one was up there as far as good movies to review. We watched the, uh, the movie last shift. Patrick, last, do you have the deets? I do. The tales. Last shift. The it details. was a 2015 movie. Uh, it came out in 2014, played the festival circuit first, and then was released on direct to video in 2015. Last shift, rookie police officer Lauren has been assigned to the last shift at a closing police station and must wait for a hazmat crew to collect biomedical evidence. Ordered not to leave the station under any circumstance, she comes to learn that it's more than just an outdated station and that it's home to the ultimate embodiment of evil and his devoted bloodthirsty followers. Officer Lauren is left to fend for herself in the devil's playground. IMDb rating 5.7 out of 10. Tomato meter critic reading 100% with a Rotten Tomatoes audience score of 50%. What? Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, there's no middle of the ground there when you hit a 50%. But the critics, you know, 100% critic rating, that's really good. That's unheard of. Yeah. But since it was direct to video, there wasn't as many critics reviewing it. I've seen it. Sure. Yep. Sure. So, who wants to dive into the pool first? Well, I mean, I'm curious, Greg, to hear you got a page of notes over there, dude, and I don't, mm. I didn't write a fucking thing down. So you're right. Okay, well, Patrick's Greg got and Patrick page and a half typed did something I never did in high school, <laughs> and that was homework. So um, uh, I never I'm, did homework. I'm just gonna piggyback. I've seen this movie a thousand times now, so I want to say my piece really quick. Because it's a really small, it's a really small piece, and um, and then I'll move on. For me, I love this movie, so I really like this movie a lot. So let me start there. Okay, it loses its effect after you've seen it more than once or twice. It loses all the scare, all the jumps that are in there. The effectiveness is just gone. Mm-hmm. I can watch that movie now. It's like the movies I've listed earlier. Couldn't you say that about any movie, though, that you watch? Or are there still movies that you've watched a million times that still give you the creeps? There's movies that I can name that I still watch and get a little bit of a chill down my spine. But that's not one of them. Okay. So. This is the third time that I've seen it. Okay. So the, it still had creepiness factor going okay. for me. Okay. This is the second time that I've seen it, and I, there were a couple spots where I still jumped. Okay. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that it's it's a type of movie that if you watch it too many times, it loses its luster. Yeah. Because uh, I think the first time that I saw this was like two years ago, <clears throat> and this was the last movie that I remember in those two years I have been like truly terrified watching. Mm. I remember you watching it because you were texting me, I think. You, you watched it like really late at night, and I thought you said you were by yourself. Yep. In, at home and that was a horrible and idea it was all it was all comments like i fucking hate you why would you tell me to watch this movie um all this shit and i was i remember sitting at my house just laughing because i was like i knew this was gonna just destroy <laughs> him mentally yeah anyway i'm gonna piggyback off notes oh okay so uh, who, who wants uh, to go first with their notes i mean half of mine are just things like little topic things to talk about as we're going <laughs> along because i i just made notes as the movie was progressing yeah mm-hmm. That's and, what I did. and the first thing I, that, I, that i had a question about that really never made sense is what the hell was the lieutenant flipping off about at the very beginning where she's walking down the hallway and the lieutenant's just pounding on the locker doors and everything else never explained what that was about ever yeah that's kind of weird i now that you mentioned that i i don't know I started to wonder the other night when I was watching it if he was not really there either. If from the beginning she walked in and that was just another part of her. The experience. Yeah. yeah. No, I think he was. OK. Yeah. Because there's she has three points of contact with him. And that's at the beginning. It's at the phone call. Oh, and by the way, we're doing spoilers because this movie is over. Oh, that is him on the phone call? Yeah. That's him? OK. Yeah. No, she calls him. She calls yeah, she him. Calls him. Yeah. He never calls her back, that, though. I know, but that's him when she calls. That, yeah. I, okay. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Because, yeah, because she says. Because she's, that gives him the reason to return. She okay. tries to tell him all the weird stuff that's going on and she catches herself and says, I'm really happy to be on the force. Yeah. Okay, I got you. So 
Yeah, that was that's kind of a weird thing. And I think it actually it helps whatever what happened with that situation. It really kind of helps set the atmosphere right. Mm -hmm. It starts it off right because you go into this stressful, anxiety filled situation of this leader in your organization is beating the shit out of a locker. Mm hmm. And as a rookie walking into that and you see that, you're thinking, what the fuck the is going on here? Right. Yeah. Right. And so already she's going to be on edge and then they go on their little tour and he talks to her about the whole uh, evidence room. There's going to be people coming in trying to get everything in there and he's just they're fucking with her, which I, I don't agree with uh, whatever the word is that I can't I cannot think of words tonight. See I that? apologize. But um, hazing, hazing. Sure. I don't agree with hazing at all. I think that's a yeah. dick move, but I get it for the movie part. It's kind of a rookie mistake. Sorry, keep going. (laughs) But what it does is it sets the tension and the atmosphere of this movie. And I feel from that point, it never lets go. And that's what I really love about this movie is it's so simplistic. It's so minimal, but it's so powerful. Mm -hmm. And that's speaking of simplistic and minimal. uh, I read a uh, not a review, an interview with the director writer Mm -hmm. of this, and they hadn't written any of this until they found a location that. That that they that there was a location, an abandoned police station mm-hmm. down in Florida, and they said, "Let's write a story around this." Yep. And they got into the place. The water was still running. The electricity was still on, mm-hmm. and the police had actually left a bunch of shit in this building. So they basically just wrote this story around what they had available to them. And that's awesome. Smart guys. Right? Yeah, because, I mean, they never left the facility. They used the parking lot of the facility. They used the back area of the facility. They never left it. So, yeah, once again, great example of keeping it simple. Yeah, exactly. So one of the notes, kind of piggybacking on the the last thing that I said, it, it wastes no time getting started. Like As soon as the the, uh, was the sheriff, the uh, was he a sergeant? He was either a sergeant or a lieutenant. I can't remember. One of the two. Whenever, as soon as he left, it wastes no time in getting started. Mm-hmm. Things happen immediately. And I, th- I think that's, again, that's part of that atmosphere that it creates of it grips the viewer and it holds on. And is, it just utilizes all elements of the movie where, like, you've got a not really even a soundtrack. Like, there's nothing there, and it just makes you really uncomfortable. Yeah, there, there's really no music. It's all sound driven. It's all sound driven. And I, I think that just that adds to the the terror of the movie. It just, it makes you uncomfortable throughout the entire thing. She was instructed by the Lieutenant that, that she had to be there specifically because of this hazmat group coming in. Yeah. 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 This kind of bothered me a little bit. It's like what hazmat group works from 10 o'clock PM to 4 AM in the morning. And they kind of covered that a little bit when the, the hazmat group called in and said, you know, we're running behind here. That's why it's come. That's why this is happening so late. But it almost sounded like it was planned that they weren't going to get there till early morning. It's four a.m. Yeah. 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 Well, they, they, they the said clock, it was. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's when they finally got there. But they did say the lieutenant did say early on they'll be here anytime between 10 and 4. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. To me, that just seemed weird because you're a hazmat group. You can pick this stuff up in the morning. It's all in boxes. It's not like you had to go in and clean things up right. or anything like that. So that seemed kind of a little contrived to me. But still, it's such a small thing to, to, yeah, to yeah. worry about yeah. with it. And then also, that's her first day on the job and she falls asleep almost immediately. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw that. It's, it's like she's reading the book and she falls asleep. But then that made me wonder at the very beginning after seeing it, you know, two times before is like, is this when things start happening? How much of this is reality from this point on? I'd have been pissed. I would have been pissed if it was a dream. Oh, my oh, God. Yeah. I'd have broke some shit. Right. So over that excuse. Yeah. It's it's a cheap cop out. Yeah. And I'm glad that we never got to figure out what had happened. No. Do you think the guy peeing on the floor and the girl outside were they real? Were they there? I have an answer to that because it was also in the interview with the director. Okay. Yes. They were there for They real. were real. Okay. Okay. So what – did they talk about the purpose of at least the – I'm assuming it was the homeless guy, the guy peeing on the floor. Did they talk about a purpose for him being there? Was it just like – I don't that, – I think that's that's the, one of the harder parts He seemed me. like he was looking for something. Right. Yeah. That's, that's one of the harder parts for me to wrap my head around is A – you're in a, a locked building that has maybe two entrances and exits mm-hmm. at the most, at least that we see. Yeah. We both know that they're locked, or at least one of them is guarded. We know that the back one is locked. How is this guy getting in? And that's why I was kind of thinking maybe he's a figment of her imagination too, or a like, part yeah. of that. But if he's real, then, okay, 
was he in this place and just hanging out until Lieutenant whatever his name yeah. is checks out or I don't know. Um, the, I don't remember that in the interview, mm-hmm. but I will look it up as we're discussing. And this then stuff the lady outside was if she was well real or not, she was literally just placed there just to give a little more info on like because there why would she be a hey, why would you go back to the place that you've been all before happened, yeah. where mm-hmm. all that shit happened and you yeah. go back there I, I would never return to that place was just placed there just to give her some everybody some insight on to, um, yeah I mean, unless it's one of those things no where you to be there you know that at one time you shouldn't be there because it was a police station and if you're walking the streets you're not in a good place but it, she knew that the the new police station was open, so that one was going to be closed. Yeah, it's she knows it's going to be basically abandoned. It was a scene that could have been cut. It, it probably could have. Yeah. I understand why it was there. It didn't bother me that it was in there. Yeah. It was kind of. I, I almost saw it as kind of a a comfort for the uh, the rookie officer Lauren. What was her name Officer Lauren? Officer Lauren. Yeah. I, it was kind of a comfort to see their dialogue between one of the two of them because it just you felt like okay, this is something real and tangible that she could hold on to in yeah. this evening of what the absolute mm-hmm. fuck is going on yeah did you find what you were looking for yes i did nice. uh he said uh, the director says he was totally real i knew that people would be like uh, well what about that homeless guy and there were definitely things in there that we didn't answer along the way but if we do a prequel movie i think he'll be an integral part of it for me the backstory that i gave him was that he was a father whose daughter was pulled into the cult and she was killed oh. he was coming to the police station on that anniversary because he was looking for an item of hers that he wanted i would see that prequel in a heartbeat yeah, that agreed. would be fantastic agreed Read. And knowing that, you watch the whole movie kind of completely different. Absolutely. Really. So uh, being filmmakers and watching this movie, there's a lot of different things that I caught this time around that I didn't catch the first time around. Just some great uses of the camera. The scene where Officer Lauren gets locked in the cell with the homeless guy after oh. she tases him. And it's just the flashlight being passed around. between. I love that scene. Oh, my God. That was such a great scene. For great one, scene. for one, great use of sound in black in complete darkness because you don't know what's going on for sure. You hear noises, you hear her talking, you hear all this other stuff, and then when the light gets picked up, you assume it's the homeless guy, mm-hmm. and, and then, then, then all of a sudden the light him. shines on the homeless guy, and you're like, "What the fuck?" Right? Yeah. I just that was a great use of, yeah. of the darkness and playing with uh, other senses and everything like that. It was just a great shot there. Another shot that I caught was the Dutch angle that they used when Officer Lauren was talking to uh, Marigold. I called her Marigold the hooker. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Just, <laughs> it was just it was interesting that it was just kind of it was yeah, yeah, like that yeah. where you could see just the. I, I question whether that was necessary. That scene. I think you could have got the story that she told differently differently. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what we yeah. talked because about you there. kind of already got that with Officer Rice. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That, that he could Price. have been the one to price. Yeah, that's it. That he could have delivered that story much more effectively. Oh, yeah. And just out of the gate. Mm-hmm. Yes. Very true. Uh, and the last note that I had made on just really fantastic scene sequence was the the video TV sequence. Oh, yeah. Was bone chill. When they're putting on the masks and they're... Is that what you're talking no, about? When they're when they're doing like the, the she she the walks into the interview. room and there's three TVs on and it starts with with uh, Payson's Payman's oh, yeah, interview yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. and then the two yep. girls and it's going simultaneously mm-hmm. and then going switches watch. into the realistic part of it. Yeah, watching the three of those, especially the chick that was laughing and then smashes her face. face. And, oh yeah. Mm. At first, I said something. Like, normally, I don't like overacting, but for this, it worked really well because I grew up with the Manson family stuff going on mm-hmm. and watching interviews with his with. The, all of his quote unquote wives yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. These women were batshit crazy. Right. And so th- even though it was over the top a little bit, to me, it was convincing because of that, because I had already been through a Manson style thing. Not that, not that I was like alive and yeah. remembered everything mm-hmm. going on, but it was close enough to when I grew up. Right. That I could really relate this story to that kind of thing. And I, I'm pretty sure that's what they were going for because they even referenced Manson style. Oh, yeah. Blah, yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 right, blah. right. And especially with the blood writing on the walls and stuff like that. A couple of things about the writing on the walls, by the way. She looks up, she sees Sal. Yes. Well, Sal's a female pig. Right. So they knew exactly what they were doing with that. And then later on, uh, there was writing on the wall that said, Payman, King of Hell, was written on the wall in blood. 
uh, Payman, the guy's name, they were originally going to call this movie Payman King of Hell. That was that the original title. Terrible which, which title. Been a terrible title. However, Payman is a king of hell who governs 200 legions, half of them from the angelic order and half of them from the order of powers. And you might know this or remember it. They said this most recently reference to Payman is in the movie Hereditary. There's a coven chanting his name, trying to get him to come. Mm-hmm. I hope I didn't spoil that no. for anybody. I don't no. think that gives anything away. But <clears throat> no, it's don't. interesting. Here's this demon person that I had never even heard of and now referenced in two movies, one I've seen and one I want to see. Interesting. Yeah. So one question that I had come up in this movie, and it's not necessarily about the content of the, well, kind of about the content, but more along the lines of a, a subgenre classification, because I, I kind of feel like it lives in two camps. Before I before I respond to what I have written down, what would you classify this movie as as far as subgenre? Supernatural horror. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I had uh, I had supernatural horror. I also had psychological horror, mm-hmm. which I think it it could go either way. It depends what's real in her head or not. Because if if you take this literally <clears throat> that she's gone crazy and she's seeing all this stuff that there that there is nothing supernatural going on yeah you can definitely see it as a psychological okay i was just curious that was one thing that i had uh, had come up so that was really all that i had i had uh <laughs> one question that i had in there which doesn't it's more of a rhetorical question of why when officer price confirms all the strange happenings were actually legitimate and mm-hmm. then she sees the guy's head mm-hmm. in the back why the hell would you not go out and just sit in your car in front of that building i she think she tried to get out I I, she did try she to did, leave but it out. was after that it was after that because <laughs> yeah. i she um what had happened at that point i go ahead greg okay what had happened at that point he walks out you see the the mm-hmm. hole in the back of mm-hmm. the guy's head mm-hmm. and as she's getting up to walk out a picture falls and lands on the ground and it's of her father mm-hmm. um and i don't remember if it was of her father who had his death picture or, no that's a little bit later that that happens no no no, no. was it yeah, because she's she was on the phone in the corner of her eye. Oh, she sees no, no, no. Okay, you're right. You're right. I'm sorry. So yeah, it was after Price had mm-hmm. left. She had seen the guy with yeah. the, the his head had blown mm-hmm. out. It was after the phone call. The reason she comes back in is because the phone is ringing. So and she's talking with Monica, I believe, at that point. Mm, yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. So then she took a phone call from one of the other officers at the other place, where he said that this is all stuff that has happened and it's kind of the reason mm-hmm. that we're getting into the new building. Right. Why at that point? Would you not get the fuck out of that building and just sit in your car in front the, of Because there? she the, kept telling her dad. Remember, she's the whole exactly with it. her that's dad. Exactly it. I will not leave. I will stay. I will stay my post and I will not let you down. And I, I will. That was the stuff I that she was muttering. Converse, yeah. OK, I must have missed she that the part. whole thing with uh, when her dad called her on her well, phone. Well, her dad called her yeah. on the phone. That, But but I think up that was until, after. I think that was that driving force all the way up to that yeah. point as well is. I have got to do my dad good. Yeah. Okay. I have to do good by my dad, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And that that keeps her there because there's there was a lot of opportunities mm-hmm. that she had to leave. To vacate. There was a couple things that happened uh, along the way that, you know, it's, first I didn't understand the hair, the string and her food type thing because that didn't tie into and anything that else. That I think it was all, just yeah. something to, to, to fuck with to, her. To start yeah. Yeah. people <clears throat> thinking something's weird. And why she wasn't more <clears throat> alarmed by a couple of things like the the, the shit covered bathroom. Mm-hmm. It's like nobody would have left it like that. So I used to go to work in a shit happened. covered bathroom every morning. Yeah. So. And then when she walks in and finds that other photo of her and her dad mm-hmm. and then turns around, all the locker doors are open. It's like that's when I would be thinking, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm in my car. Deuces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so there was those things that led up to it that she like I said, she had plenty of opportunity to say something is effed up here and I'm going to go sit in my car. Mm-hmm. But I, I think that's what was going on is that she had that responsibility to her promise to her father yeah. or, or the promise that she had made to herself for her father to, to stay in there. And again, it was, is more of a rhetorical because you wouldn't have had a movie had that been the case. Right. So she had to stay in there for yeah. that to happen. Yeah. But it was just one of those like, go sit out in your car. There's nothing in there that's going to happen that you can't deal with. That's in, what yeah. sitting in your car. Yeah. 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 So, um, one thing I appreciated so much about this movie was its use of practical effects. I felt there was very little CGI mm-hmm. or augmented things. Uh, I think the only augmented things that I saw was the the heads twitching. Oh yeah, um, that bit, uh, and then the chair stacked, 
you know, when the chairs got stacked up, I never yeah. really understand how they do that. Even like in poltergeist and stuff like that, I never understood how they can do that that quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, so things like like that, the, the sliding file cabinets, the slamming of doors, everything in this movie was practical. Right. Save a few, a small handful of things and very, very effective. I appreciated that. I thought because of the sound and everything else, they were able to make very effective use of jump scares mm-hmm. in this movie. I'm a sucker for jump scares. I love them, but there can get to a point where they become less effective because there's so many of them or that they're predictable. Exactly. And I I think that's kind of one thing that I appreciated about this movie was while there were a few jump scares, there weren't a lot. And if it was happening, it was because you completely forgot about the almost the tension of the Mm -hmm. movie. Like you were so absorbed Mm -hmm. and saturated within the story of this movie that all of a sudden John Michael Payman pops his head out really quick. And you're just like, God damn it. I got to change my pants. Yeah. Yeah. And that was my problem was I knew all those beats. Exactly. Every one of them. Yeah. Right. So it's for as a first time watcher, I recommend that movie to people all the time. Right. Right. As a first time viewer, it may be the second time viewer. Those beats will still kick you in the face further on down the road. When you know those are coming, it's kind of yeah. like, yeah, you know, it was there. I just I just never once felt that there was a cheap scare. No, in this movie. Not at all. Yeah. I, I completely agree with that. It was just just a great movie. You know, it, you don't see a lot of horror films like this anymore, which I, I'm kind of bummed about because I feel like they could be doing this stuff and they're going for more of the cheap scares, the jump mm-hmm. scares. And you just you just don't see movies like this anymore. And that's kind of a bum deal. A couple character things. The end of the Officer Price scene mm-hmm. completely came unexpected to me when he turned around and revealed that maybe he wasn't so much living. That was side note. One note that I'd written down was expect the unexpected. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And maybe we're giving too much away on this, but, like, you know, like I said, it's three years out, but I still think people watching this are going to still be surprised by what they see. Mm-hmm. That was a nice break, too, for anybody watching that movie. Mm-hmm. That scene was a nice little it, it was, it it, was a nice well, scene, we had like five or six minutes nice with just a conversation. Break. Yeah, there's no shit that goes on mm-hmm. when he's there. It's just a nice little back and forth they have. It gives you a little breather. Before it throws you back in. <laughs> Before he turns his head around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But not knowing that's coming. Exactly. And that's, yeah. That conversation yeah. is a nice break in that movie. Right. Um, it's it's just nice how they, they utilize that, knowing that, hey, this guy's going to turn his head around. And, oh, okay, we, we haven't left yet. Yeah. We're, we're still in the thick of it. The creepy contortionist chick. Yeah. Is that supposed to have been Monica? I think that was my assumption yeah, because she been. looked like she'd been severely beaten. And I think mm-hmm. I remember that they said something about a baseball, baseball bat, bat and all yeah, that other stuff. Mm-hmm. So I assume that was Monica. That was a good bit. There was that mirror effect. She was walking into that room with the girls sitting in a half circle, but because yeah. the mirror was next to him, it looked like a full circle. Oh yeah. But then those girls turned and the girls in the mirror didn't. So that was a nice, nice touch. Uh, they had this interesting use of the camera for, I don't want to say it was the spirit's POV mm-hmm. that she was standing in a hallway and they kept zooming past her and she was reacting to oh, yeah. the oh, camera. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was really intriguing that they that they would switch it up like that every once in a while. But I think that added to the whole point of, again, expect the unexpected. Mm-hmm. You do not know what is real anymore. And now you're getting thrown it, at from all different it angles. kept me on my heels <clears throat> while I was watching this. Right. Because exactly what you said. Don't I mean, expect the unexpected. And then the last couple of notes that I have, are you already through your notes? Do you have some more? No, I'm uh, the only other thing that I had was uh, I love the shot where she actually runs out the door. The phone rings, but the shot holds on the door and you can Mm -hmm. see the breath on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually I had to pause it several times and I had Emily come over and take a look at that because you could see see? a face in the door. And I thought that was a phenomenal little touch. Uh, The last thing that I had note wise was I thought it was an incredible reveal of the hazmat team at the end. Mm-hmm. The the way they did that, I didn't expect that. I and I didn't either when I yeah. first saw that. But once they revealed that it was the hazmat team running through the halls, did that take anything away from that scene for you? Like no, when not you're at all. they're running through shooting, it, I kind of lost it there a little bit because I was trying to figure out how they tied that. I know it's in her mind that this guy is shooting at her mm-hmm. and she's shooting at those people. Mm-hmm. I know that. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I didn't see No, it, it didn't it take anything so. away from it. My final note on this is 
Juliana Harkavy, or however you pronounce her last name, I thought she was phenomenal. She carried this movie almost literally by herself Mm -hmm. because so many scenes where it was just her. And you don't see her in a lot. She was in Walking Dead. I don't know if she's still in it, but she was on Arrow. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't have a lot in the sense of A-list things going for her. And even the director said they weren't going to cast her at first because she looked too young and didn't have enough experience. But then when he met with this other guy, this guy said, what about her? And so that solidified that he wanted he wanted her for this and i'm glad they did i thought she was phenomenal Phenomenal. she was just amazing absolutely phenomenal so uh give it a rating guys yeah i'm I'm gonna on my fright meter (laughs) screw the tomato meter or whatever (laughs) i'm gonna give it an eight i'd give it a nine i I, I think it's i'm gonna go right in the middle 8.5 um I'm, I'm wondering if the, the, the people who ended up buying this or getting the rights to distribute this kind of kicked themselves for not doing a theatrical release on it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're almost taking a gamble and some hit and some don't. And I think you see more hit more that don't hit than they do. And so I think had that movie came out in 2018, it would have had a better push mm-hmm. for oh, un, yeah. for unknowns being yeah. pushed now. Yep. That would have had a better push in 2018. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. (laughs) All right. That appears to be the end of our podcast here. Does anybody have any plugs that they would like to plug? Hit that subscribe button, guys. Um, We're all over the place where you can subscribe through iTunes, through Google Play, through Spotify, through uh, Google Podcasts. You can hit the RSS feed on Pinecast.com. You can find us pretty much anywhere. Stitcher, Player, FM. Let's get those subscriptions up. We're starting to get some traction, and then I'd like to see this go some places. So uh, refer it to friends. Do all that stuff. Yeah, We've we've got some listeners, and we're we're so grateful that you guys stop by and say hi and listen and chat and all that with us we have some new stuff coming we do we have very like, soon i some well I, I say we go ahead and just announce that yeah. uh the next time you hear from us uh, we're gonna have a slightly modified format and we are gonna have a new co-host joining us yeah yes i'm excited for that i we am are too. too that'd be cool yep. it'd be a good time so i'm looking forward to it other plugs josh get some new perspectives oh yeah i can go um yeah. <laughs> just throw that right at you yeah uh, hey, the Prairie Lanes Film Festival is coming up in October 12th, 13th, and 14th in Grand Island, Nebraska at the historic Grand Theater. Come on out and uh, and hang out. It's a pretty awesome time. Super cheap, $10 for the whole weekend. Gets you the vouchers for the uh, soda and the popcorn, all the after parties, and all the other cool stuff that goes down that weekend. It's year six. six. Wow. If you have not been out there one year, this is the year to start. So um, <laughs> some pretty cool announcements have already been made. Kick-ass lineups coming out. Um, it's going to be a pretty damn good time. It is. Come, come out and support some local film. Come out and support me. I've got a film in there, and I'm really excited that it's there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of your short film, Greg? The name of my short <laughs> is called The Best, starring our own Patrick Lambrick. Hello. Yeah. Anyway, so, phenomenal job. The announcements that have come so far, and you can find that on PrairieLightsFilmFest.com, or they got a Facebook page, too. You can see all the announcements on the Prairie Lights uh, yep. Facebook page. They've announced quite a few. More to come. And, um, and so speaking far, so of good. Facebook, you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Twitter. You can find us on YouTube. And you can always find out information about us at MidnightFrightFilms.com. Yes. Absolutely. Last and probably least. I am Greg the Movie Guy, the best movie reviewer you have never heard of. I write blog posts with a positive spin over at gregthemovieguy.com. Most recently, I have posted my review of local film premiering on August 9th at 7 p.m. at the Exarban Cinema, Green on Green from Exarban Creative. Great film from uh, Tom Noblock and Ben Matukowicz. It's gotten great responses. I've had hundreds of readers, which is blows me away. So green on green coming out. Uh, and then this week you will see the dropping of the post legacy of the white tailed deer hunter. So stop by, say hi, read and share with your friends over at Greg, the movie guy.com fellas. Been another successful podcast here. It's been great talking with you guys about you a phenomenal movie and some great movies and all the awesome stuff that's going on here with midnight frights. My name is Greg, the movie guy, and I'm going to wrap this up by saying, get ready for four co-hosts oh i was like four <laughs> i'm so goddamn lost i hated all the fantastic four movies no no no, no, no. About? no i was trying to be 
sneaky and mysterious. No, and now with, and now we're just buddy. and now we're just trying it off yeah, like see, we normally we do. I, tr- <laughs> I tried. So let's just try this again, <laughs> guys. Get ready for four. Dun, 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 and uh, four. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs>